Hello everyone, All right. Andy Yank here. We've got an interview with Slade.com today, so we're very, very privileged. So thank you so much, Slade, for coming in um, and offering your time and uh, your your experience and knowledge. First off, uh, we just want to show you his Twitter here. So Slade, he's a veteran artist, um, NSFW artist in the community. He has 141,000 followers on Twitter, which is absolutely crazy. And uh, he has a Patreon here and a subscribe star. So Please, please, please uh, go down to these links here or search them in, in Google to um, subscribe and help them out. So yeah, um, so Slade, um, thank you so much for coming in today. Just the first question to get this interview started. So can you give me a brief introduction to yourself and what do you kind of do uh, on Twitter for those who might not know you? Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm glad to uh, talk to everybody out there and hopefully inspire some uh, you know, aspiring artists. Um, as far as myself, uh, I am a failed YouTuber who uh, decided that, uh, you know, enough is enough. Uh, I'm going to turn to the dark side of NSFW and try to make a name for myself. Um, <laughs> uh, I really uh, I'm flattered that you call me a veteran artist because I literally I've only been doing NSFW, um, you know, Rule 34 for like a year and a half now, almost wow. two yeah, and I only started doing 3D art maybe about three years ago. Uh, maybe more like two. Actually, I think it was like closer to two, two and a half years ago. So like I, I'm, I'm actually pretty new to it all. So and, uh, uh, that's high praise. I think I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> As far as what I do on my Twitter, uh, uh, I shit post a lot, <laughs> um, but also uh, anybody who knows, I post whips uh, religiously, uh, constant, constant whips, because getting people hyped gives me uh, dopamine, and uh, you know I have a pretty addictive personality, so like once I got that first little bit of like, oh, people like what I'm actually putting out there, uh, I just kind of kept going, and going, and going. Yeah. But um. My my style as far as what I do, I used to kind of like do just kind of still images. Um, but now, uh, as a lot of people know, I've kind of moved on to making uh, animations with a heavy emphasis on um, complex physics simulations from, you know, hair, cloth, fluid simulations, um, and also a very heavy emphasis on, like, quality and detail of, like, facial expressions um, and, you know, yeah. things like that definitely like um slade is actually a master <laughs> at fluid and soft simulations if you just look at any of his animations on twitter um he's just he's absolutely smashing it out of the park um probably even unrivaled in the blender kind of scene for his physics and highly technical animations thank you so much so and also just a follow-up question is there any story behind your username slade.com so it, um it's actually it's actually uh it's slade.com like uh like coopers <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and so yeah so pretty much like the whole thing of me you know getting into rule 34 uh stuff was kind of like a joke at first um I was a Rainbow Six Siege YouTuber for a long time. Yeah. Um, and like I had done work for like, you know, various esports companies, uh, like uh, did some editing for G2. Um, and uh, I did some editing for Coconut Bra. Um, it, it was a really, uh, sh I shouldn't say was, is a really popular uh, Rainbow Six Siege YouTuber. And uh, I think he's also done Destiny and like other stuff like that. Um, and under my own channel, um, I got up to like 11 and a half thousand follow or sorry, subscribers on YouTube. Um, and that channel was called PB and slay. Um, and it wasn't really growing as fast as I wanted it to, you know, after like, you know, five years and so not, into it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, so much effort. Like I put the same amount of effort into my YouTube videos. I feel like as I uh, as I do now with my uh, my animations and stuff. But I was like, you know, what? I'm not getting the clout that I want to have yet. And you know, I was like, you know, I'm joking. Was talking to my friends. I'm like, all right, how do you get clout on the on the internet? You gotta have titties. I'm like, okay, well, I don't have titties, so I'm gonna make some titties. And I started doing it, and I was like, oh, shit, people actually like this. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of kept going, and uh, I was like, all right, well, 
what's going to be my artist name if I'm actually going to do this? You know, what am I going to do for an artist name? I was like, all right, well, Slade. Um, now I'm making stuff that's all about Coon. So at a Slade uh, Coon, I got kind of like, just like, you know, obviously with my logo, I'm like, like piggybacking off of like the whole, you know, kind of Vixen network of uh, stuff, you know, black.com. Yeah. Uh, and then actually I found out afterwards there actually is a slade.com already. I was like, oh shit, I hope they don't come after me for copyright. <laughs> um, but yeah, I figured, you know, it's a really easily memorable type of brand. Um, yeah, simple, easy word, you know, it, it, it just kind of worked. It was like, you know, all right, I've got my PB and Slade for years. This, this fits. That's really cool that you've integrated parts of your past and kind of, um, into your current current NSFW art kind of uh, label, <laughs> so that's really cool. Um, yeah. So another question for you, Asway. So can you tell us how you first became interested in NSFW art? Yeah, well, I think I kind of already uh, rambled off and uh, gave yeah, that whole yeah. uh, or just a moment ago. But yeah, like I said, uh, one of my own kind of uh, clout wasn't grown fast enough doing uh, SFW stuff. Um, what happened actually, to give you a little bit more detail, I did my first 3D animation project, yep. um, and it took me about four months. It was a pretty popular YouTube video called Siege's Bizarre Adventure. Um, okay. yeah, it was, uh, like this, uh, basically just a recreation of, um, one of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure yeah. openings, um, but with Rainbow Six Siege characters. And I did that in SFM. That was my very first, uh, animation project ever. Um, I loved it. I had so much fun doing it. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to chase this feeling. So I started learning a little bit more about animation and did a couple other small things in SFM, but I was like, all right, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do animation, I got to take this shit seriously. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start learning how to use Blender. And you know, as I started using Blender, I learned a lot of fundamentals before I eventually made that switch over at NSFW. And uh, yeah, yeah, so it you, took off. You kind of a self-taught artist. Like, have you ever done like Blender or 3D? animation before in like school or college not at all no uh i went to school for business <laughs> uh -huh. and zero i don't have any kind of like artist I, like the last artistic thing i did um you know prior to like editing uh i was like i used to like sketch stuff with pencil and pen and paper when i was a kid um but that, yeah, that's it. I don't have any kind of formal training. I didn't go to school for anything. I learned it all from kind of talking with people in the community, um, you know, friends who were more familiar uh, than I am with this stuff, who were happy to help and share information. But uh, primarily just hours of watching YouTube tutorials. Wow, that's awesome, like, that you're able to achieve this level of, of experience and knowledge just by yourself. So <laughs> that's really inspiring to hear. So is there any important advice that you would give to an artist who has some experience in NSFW art um, and wants to turn it into a full-time career? In fact, wait, before I even ask this, uh, is this kind of a full-time career for you? It so absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it actually is. Uh, so like for the first, uh, for the first year and like three months of Slade.com, uh, I was working full-time. Um, uh, and IT, and uh, it was a soul-crushing job. I hated every waking moment uh, <laughs> yeah, that I had to clock in, do a nine-to-five, uh, be a corporate wage slave. I was, I was miserable. Um, and it got to the point where my mental health was suffering so bad um, that I was like, all right, uh, I don't know how much longer I can do this, but basically I was like, I was like so checked out um, that I was just spending a lot of time any any amount of free time that I had, just learning more and trying to become better and better at what I was doing with Slate.com. Yeah. And it got to a point where I was like, okay, well, you know, hey, the Patreon's doing okay. I talked about it with my wife and we were like, you know, I I think I th it's going to be kind of tough. I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure what the future will hold, but I think that I could actually quit my job and maybe do this full time and we'll see if I just dedicate full time to this, it'll get even better. And once I did that, once I felt, you know, and shoot, it was scary as hell, but like once I did dedicate myself to this full time, it was like night and day, like just 
it took off even more. And now I'm at a point where like I've doubled, I'm, I'm making double what I was doing with my full-time day job now. That's awesome. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you've like, you've achieved this level of success and being able to make this like a full-time career. Um, yeah. Is there any advice like that you would give some artists like who wants to do something similar, like, like, like you, I guess, like how, how do yeah. you kind of achieve this kind the, of thing? The best piece of advice that I have for people is really kind of simple. Uh, it's just basically don't, don't compare yourself. I mean, listen, it, it's, it's, it's kind of stupid to say this because everybody's going to always compare themselves to other people, but you're never going to, I feel like you're never going to be successful comparing yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. My strategy every time that I do something yeah. is before I release it, I ask myself, is this better than the last thing that I made? Is it better than the last project that I, I finished? And if the answer is no, then I'll spend a little bit more time refining, tweaking, looking at it and seeing what I can do to make it better. Yeah. Um, anybody who's like seen any of my kind of progression through my animations can clearly see like already now there's a huge difference in the quality of my fluid simulations from like when I first started to now. Well, I, the first couple of animations I did, my fluid simulations were just like, <laughs> it was just disgusting. I cringe when I look back on them. It's horrific. Hate it. But now, uh, I, I could, I've just, I've just practiced and I've refined and just worked so much on just improving my workflow yeah. and making it a lot more detailed that um it just it just shines and like just kind of speaks for itself that i'm i'm, I'm improving with every iteration the level of quality always increases definitely i'd say that's definitely true yeah. dude you're gonna love this new one i'm telling you when it drops in a couple of days <laughs> it's gonna blow you away man i i'm really excited i'm really excited for it what platforms do you suggest for like nsfw artists in particular like patreon ko-fi or pixiv and in your experience like what <laughs> Like which ones kind of are the most successful for you and like kind of earn you the most money, I guess. Um, well, yeah. Um, well, Patreon is my bread and butter right now because that's the first one I started off with. And it's also you know, the most recognizable one. Um, I don't really like Patreon that much because they um, kind of like place restrictions on um, certain things that people can and can't do. And also like they, they, I just like found out they like police your Twitter. Like I, I had them like reach out to me and they were like, Hey, you need to go and delete these tweets that are on your, on your Twitter account because I like tweeted something. It wasn't even bad. It was literally, I had tweeted out um, a whip that I was working on and in the whip, I showed uh, the reference that I was using and the reference included like a real woman doing you know like sucking on a dildo and they were like no we can't support anybody that you know is doing like real yeah. people having sex i was like wow okay um uh, kind of cringe but all right i'll delete it um so yeah i i don't really like that kind of authoritarian puritanical bs that pure uh that uh that patreon does yeah um sorry it's horror stories about that as well yeah yeah, but like I can, I have to, you know, I have to stick with it because like it's literally like the majority of my, the vast majority of my income comes from Patreon, so I got to abide by those rules. Um, I don't have any experience with Ko-Fi, um, nor do I with Pixiv. If I understand correctly, like if you do stuff on Pixiv, you have to like censor your stuff because it's yeah, like, you're bound. Yeah. yeah, you're bound by like the Japanese laws and you know i i ain't gonna do all that so i'm just gonna skip right over that one um i like subscribe star i think it has a bit more of a fee um than other um platforms yeah yeah and it's ui isn't as easily navigatable i think or you know like kind of fresh yeah but on the flip side though you get complete creative freedom which i really do like and yeah, I, I probably, you know, I would make some edgier content if I wasn't, uh, you know, with Patreon wasn't standing behind me with a baseball bat ready to crack my skull open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I feel like that subscribe star is like good from a lot of NSFW creators because they do support NSFW and SFW content. Um, yeah. So I do have both Patreon and subscribe star, um, which you know, is, 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 is nice. I definitely do recommend uh, for artists 
um, set up multiple accounts, you know, give people different options for uh for revenue because like at first i was i thought to myself like oh well it's kind of you know i don't see the point i already have a patreon why should i set up subscribe star but no i've got like a nice little you know chunk of change rolling in through subscribe star um that supplements the patreon income too so can you tell us in general terms about your animation workflow so like what do you kind of do from start to finish to complete an yeah okay yeah, sure thing. So, um, first things first, uh, I come up with the idea of, you know, what the vibe is going to be, so to speak, you know, like, um, and, uh, once I go, once I have that, I, you know, kind of pick out what character I start kind of like, I, and honestly, it just kind of like, I just like think about it and I just kind of come up with ideas and I keep them in my head and turn them around for a while and then i start working on another project and then i start working on another project and then i start working on another project and i don't finish it because i start a whole bunch of different projects that i never finish <laughs> yeah uh, now but for real though um basically the workflow goes like this you know i do the uh, the the beginning um like kind of key pose uh key position yeah. Um, and then I just kind of start animating. I don't, I guess I don't have any like formal like training when it comes to animation or 3D art. Yeah. So I've kind of just like developed my own way of doing it and it just seems to work. Yeah. Um, I just like steamroll and just keep adding stuff onto my timeline that I think looks good. And then I kind of do test renders, check the timing and go back and tweak and refine timings as needed. Yeah. Um, and till it looks good. I try to get like the big main motions down first yeah. and then that's all done i'll go back and i'll add like small like details like finger animation um twitching um stuff like that physics sims are like the absolute biggest nightmare um yeah, yeah the end of my sanity <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so uh actually I, I don't wait until the end to do physics sims because what i'll do is i will kind of do physics sims along the way so that way i can identify early if there are any uh issues like um with clipping of meshes um proxy meshes and stuff like that to be adjusted before i like finish all of the fine detail animation yeah yeah so i'll do like really low quality physics sim bakes um for jiggle and hair and stuff like that along the way once that's done and i've done all the polish for fingers facial animations usually the last thing um that i do animation wise so you know eyebrow twitching blinking mouth stuff yeah. yeah all of that good stuff that you know takes a long long ass time to do and then once that's done then i get to the fun stuff um of fluid sims where i get to like, build the fluid sim and you know waste an entire <laughs> couple of weeks <laughs> <laughs> on just making fluids fly out of different holes. Yep. Wow. With a couple of weeks. Yeah. No wonder your uh, your physics and fluid sims are just so fantastic. I mean, I know personally that I just messed with it a little bit, and then I'm like, why does it not work? And then I'm, you like having messed with it for like four weeks, like or three or like a couple of weeks, and I'm like, wow, that's no wonder <laughs> your animations look so amazing. Just a curious, curious about that. Um, do you use references like when you're animating, or do you just kind of come up with the, with the idea in your head? Um, so it varies. Uh, sometimes I do use references, but most of the time I actually don't. Like this diva um, animation that I'm getting ready to drop, hundred percent of it all off the top of my dome. No references, no pose, not for the mo uh, movements, none of that. Um, the Tifa animation, I obviously I used a, a reference because you know I did that old like Hulk smash meme thing. Um, yeah. um, but no, most of the time, I'm trying to think of the, la the last time that I used a reference. I think it was that that Tifa animation actually. Yeah. Yeah, the Ella one that I just did uh, didn't have a reference. It was also just kind of all off the top of my head. 
Um, sometimes what I'll do uh, is I might use like a picture as a reference, just kind of get like a general idea of how I want to frame a shot. And then from there, I'll make up my own motion just using the uh, picture as the initial key pose. What's your favorite part of NSFW animations that you've watched or seen? Like, and uh, what parts do you like use them, I guess? In, in fact, like, do you use those uh, by other artists and try to add them to your own work? So... Huh. That's an interesting question. So, let me make sure I'm understanding, like, what, what elements of NSFW animation do I like the most and try to incorporate into my stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. I was, you know, like, kind of old school, really big Studio Fowl fan. Yeah. That was probably like, my first um, introductions to, like, 3D NSFW, like a lot of people. Yeah. Because that stuff is absolutely just quality mint um so i really i really uh, like to kind of like match that speed and intensity or at least try to it's something i'm still kind of working on i want to do more um because the main thing that i'm trying to improve on my animations is conveying a sense of weight to the characters and making it seem like they're actually grounded in the scene that they're in and things aren't too floaty. Yeah. Which is, I feel like, a hard thing to do for a lot of animators. Um, but, you know, that along with just making some of the best fluid sims possible, you know, I, I, like you said, I, I feel like, yeah, I've kind of like kind of corner the market when it comes to good looking fluid sims, but yeah. I also know I could definitely do better. And there are like, you know, I'm seeing more and more artists out there who are starting to get better with fluid sims as well. So like, I know that I have to keep improving. Otherwise, you know, I'm not going to be like the fluid guy yeah. uh, much longer unless I just keep on improving. And that being said, I know I keep talking about my current project, but that being said, I really hope to show people with this uh, diva animation um, that uh, you know, I am still the fluid guy. I think I'm going to be the first. I think I'm going to be the first guy ever in the NSFW scene to actually have two fluid simulations in one animation. Two fluid sims. Oh my god, that sounds incredible already. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, and I know that um, the the Ella animation that I just said, the Rainbow Six Siege animation. I'm the first uh, the first guy to do a fluid simulation that lasts for the entire animation. That that fluid sim was the entire length of the animation. Oh my god, that's crazy. I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't even realize that for that with Ella animation. What's your favorite piece or pieces that you worked on? Ah, uh, one's my favorite. Um, the one that comes, to, there are two that come to mind are my favorites. Um, one is the Widowmaker, kind of like a throat job animation, Irimatio one, where she's laying on her back. It's gonna keep on scrolling. Keep on scrolling. <laughs> Would you say your consistency is probably uh, part of your success, I guess? I would definitely say that, yeah, it, it absolutely helps, you know, because you want to keep people engaged in the process. And one of the things that I feel like in so many aspects of life is that communication is one of the most important things um, when it comes to successfully, you know, dealing with other people. Um, and in just constantly posting updates of my whips and progress and stuff, that's my way of communicating with people. Um you know, effectively, you know, what I'm doing. Um, and it gets them really excited, like I can, like just seeing, seeing so many work in progresses and just seeing the final animation. Yeah, that's it, there it is. That's, that's my, that's probably one of my most favorite moments because I just was really proud with how the, like one, one of the things I had the hardest time learning how to do, you know, semi well, and I still have a lot to learn on it, was uh, like doing jiggle physics yeah. properly. Yeah, but uh, this one just, I really, really like the way that the jiggle physics worked out. Um, the motion, like with her legs and everything, was really good. And also, like the throw bulge and the fluid sim at the end. It was just, it was a, it, I had a lot of fun working with this one. Yeah, that was fantastic. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like the boob jiggle and everything, and the leg motion, it looks really natural and just fantastic. Thank you.
The other one was uh, that the one we talked about, the Tifa uh, Final Fantasy one. I don't even remember when I posted it. Um, it was <laughs> it was sometime last year, but I loved that one the most, um, primarily because I was able to show myself what I was able to do if I just came up with a game plan and stuck to it. And what I mean by that is my big one of my biggest shortcomings and my patreon's kind of like give me shit about it <laughs> in my discord server is that like i'm constantly like okay i'm almost done but what if i added this onto the animation that would make it even better and i, I keep on adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. and so what is supposed to be a quick you know 10 minute 10 minute adventure Morty will be in and out, you know, just it turns into uh, I'm working on an animation for like two months when it should have been done in like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I love the Tifa animation because I did that whole thing from the idea to release in three days. What was the idea out of curiosity? Um, of like uh, recreating the, the Hulk smash um yeah me but with tifa and barrett okay okay <laughs> that sounds fantastic that actually sounds yeah i know you can find it on rule 34 um it's somewhere on there people have reposted a few times but uh yeah. from like when i came up with the idea to like animating it and finishing it all three days and it turned out fantastic because it really showed people just how well how much detail i can put into believable realistic looking facial animation like i had people ask me like oh is this mocap how did you do this and i'm like no i just like stared at the faces and keyframed it manually by staring at the faces and out of curiosity because at the start you did mention that you posted on rule 34 like do you have to like post on rule 34 yourself or what kind of thing is that so i did at first when i was first starting out um I, I like was like posting like my pictures here and there on Rule Thirty Four, but it's weird. It's so weird. It's like you 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 reach like this point. You reach this point where I guess people like your stuff so much that people will just post it for you. <laughs> yeah. And I it's like for, that's why I like I uh, I just release everything that I make on Twitter because it's like free advertising. People just. Like it and post it on Rule 34, other forums, um, you know, uh, Reddit, stuff like that. And it just spreads. So, I mean, I, I, I've been on the internet long enough to know that it's pointless trying to hide porn behind a paywall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if people like it and they want to see it, they're going to figure out a way to get it for free. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, may as well just put your best stuff out there and if people want to support you they'll support you so with with your kind of nsfw journey i guess uh like are there any future dreams or hopes towards your career in nsfw anything that you still want to achieve like or future projects that you have planned i guess or ideas oh yeah Oh yeah, here's the thing. I got, I got so many ideas. I I have ideas that are gonna keep me busy for years <laughs> to come. Yeah. Uh, you have no idea. Um, I want to do. Uh, so I I, I kind of said earlier that um, on, on I think earlier this year on Twitter I was like, 2023 is gonna be the year of uh, Slade Dotcom's monster fucking era. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a lot of. Uh, I, I'm gonna be doing. Um, a lot of uh, monster, like big size difference, like monster animations um, come on later this year. Because like I said, like I, I've been a big Studio Foul fan and I feel like, you know, if I can take the quality that I have and kind of like get that Studio Foul like kind of vibe, that kind of like darkness a little bit yeah. um, with Blender, like bro, like <laughs> no shot, it's done. It's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> And to that end, actually, I've kind of secretly been working on something with a few other people. Uh, we haven't really made any progress yet, but I'm actually starting a studio yeah. um, like Studio Foul. We don't have a name for the studio yet. Um, and a lot of us are still kind of busy working on our own independent projects. But I have a few other like talented animators um, and like a couple of modelers, uh, character modelers and, and riggers who... Um, mm -hmm 
down to uh, kind of cooperate and actually form a studio. That would be incredible, honestly. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Just being able to create your own studio and like to release stuff under that. Yeah. That would be an incredible collaboration. I mean, yeah. From your community. Wow. <laughs> Those are some very aspirational dreams and some really inspirational things to think about for the future. Thanks. We'll I mean, I'm getting put this business degree to use somehow, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, so just, I guess, a final question to finish off this interview. So what do you think about the future of NSFW art? And what do you think, how do you think it's going to grow? And in what areas, perhaps? Oh, man, you know, that that is an excellent question. Um, to tell you the truth, it's, it's, it's really up in the air. Um, I feel like it's going to change massively uh, within the next several years. Like the technology is just advancing so quickly and it's becoming so easily accessible, especially with, you know, the the pandemic and like, you know, lots of people like me, like, all right, we're suddenly at home. We have a lot more time to dedicate to learning how to do these things from the comfort of our home. Yeah. Um, plus with new artificial intelligence tools that people can leverage, it's going to become easier and easier to make NSFW content. Now, the question is, is will people be able to create good NSFW content? Because I feel like speaking purely from AI, it's going to be really hard to... I mean, I feel like there are already AI models out there that people can use to create, um, you know, like anime waifus, you know, hentai images and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think I don't, I don't, I don't know if uh, it's going to reach a point where AI can start making like hentai videos or you know, three D uh, NSFW videos. <laughs> I know that there are there are some tools out there that I've kind of because I've been like trying to really research mocap and stuff like that. There are tools out there that um, you can just like set up a few cameras like in a, in a room and then like act out a scene with multiple people on the camera and then boom, it'll just like like AI can interpret that video. You don't have to like use markers or. Anything. And then you can have that motion data and boom, plug that in a blender. Again, the, the question is though, is will it be good? Because you can do that, but is it gonna be like just a horrible mess where everything's kind of clipping into each other and it's kind of like really janky and shitty and like, I can't get off of this. This dude's elbow was going through her forearm, you know? Like I, I think uh, it's gonna it's gonna take uh, people that strive for excellence in everything that they do to really elevate um, the community um, to the next level, you know, to harness and utilize that technology and combine it with their own ambition. Yeah, yeah. Like to elevate the level of NSFW content because uh, I'm sure it still has much, much to go, I guess, in that kind of aspect of yeah. improving. Um, just with artists like you, I mean, like you're constantly pushing the boundaries of fluid sim and like how it looks. I mean, um, so I think you're one of those innovators. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you. So thank you, thank you so much for your answers there, uh, Slade. Um, so yeah, um, again, so we, uh, thank you so much for taking your time to do this interview, Slade. I very, very much appreciate, and I'm very grateful to get your input and your experiences to listen to your interesting uh, how you, how you got how you became an NSFW artist. Um, again, if you want to support uh, Slade, please um, follow him on his Twitter. He always makes some awesome content. He creates lots of posts. Um, Updating, uh, updating you on his work in progress, uh, on his work on progresses, as he said. And also, please, please, please um, subscribe to his Patreon to help him out uh, if you like his content. Uh, he's a fantastic creator, and as you heard, he's, he's really, really kind and and uh, and very welcoming and warm. So uh, yeah, thank you so much, Slade, again. Um, and uh, I guess we'll hear more from you soon. <laughs> thank you. Uh, absolutely, I'll be around for a long time to come. Thank you. Take so care.